Hello, welcome to another tutorial here at CapoX Productions. My name is David. Today we're going to be looking at the finger style tutorial for Wonder by Shawn Mendes. And this arrangement is just a blast to play. It's so much fun. And it includes elements of finger style picking and uh, strumming as well. So this is going to be really good for your technique overall. I rank it around six stars out of a possible eight, meaning that it's definitely heading towards the advanced end of the spectrum. So if you do find yourself struggling a little bit with this, I want to encourage you to check out my fingerstyle fast track module. That's going to provide you with a foundation of everything you need to know before playing a piece of this kind of difficulty. Uh, if you want the tabs, you can get that on Patreon as well. It's $2 for the tabs and you get access to all of the tabs on this channel. So definitely worth it. All right, let's jump into it. All right, in this part of the tutorial, I'm going to go through bar by bar and give you a bit of an idea of what the left and right hands are doing. What I'm not going to do is explain exactly where every single note goes. That's what the tab is for. So again, if you're a bit unsure of how to read tab, I want to encourage you to check out that fingerstyle fast track module that I mentioned earlier. Uh, so before we jump into bar one, you'll notice just standard tuning, no capo. So it's pretty straightforward in that regard. Our first chord is an E major chord, followed by a bit of a percussive rattle. Uh, now this is quite a useful technique to get the hang of because it can really, uh, I don't know, add a, a bit more spice and interest if, if you're playing the guitar and you're just strumming a chord. So what, what I'm doing here is uh, I'm hitting the top part of the body with my thumb and then the bottom part of the body with my fingers. So my middle finger and my ring finger. And then I'm just going back and forth like this. And when you speed it up, it creates this kind of like percussive swell, which I think is, is quite effective. So yeah, good to practice that. A nice thing to remember is, is that when you're doing it, try not to think like keeping your fingers really rigid. You want to keep them a little bit loose and then almost like you're shaking your hand. And uh, you'll notice that when you do that, that your, your fingers are kind of like, I don't know, they, they might feel a little bit loose, but you'll be able to achieve that effect. I think, um, more successfully if, if you think of it more along the lines of moving your hand instead of moving each finger to hit the body of the guitar. Then after that we have these, uh, these sixth intervals into an F sharp minor chord with an artificial harmonic over here. I've, I've mentioned a couple of times in tutorials uh, about how to play this. I'll, I'll quickly go through it again. So essentially what you're doing is you're taking your index finger, your uh, hovering over the 14th fret and just lightly touching the string. Then your ring finger is gonna pluck the string behind. 
Uh, you can also use your thumb. Some people do it this way. I'm not a huge fan of that, but you can you can try it both ways and see what's most comfortable for you. Uh, then after that, we have those sixth intervals again, and then this kind of triangle shape, which is part of our C sharp minor chord. And then we're tapping with our right hand on the ninth fret. Okay, this looks a little bit fancy, but it's actually super easy. After you've played the chord with your right hand, you have a little bit of time just to take your index finger out and simply tap right in the middle of the ninth fret. And you've got a bit of time to come back and strum to an A major shape, harmonic with the right hand on the 12th fret, and then an A minor, and then the harmonic comes just a little bit earlier. And then we go into the verse, sliding up with your second finger into an E major shape. Uh, and then after this E major shape, it's, it's very much about the right hand. You have this kind of arpeggio with the right hand, thumb, index, middle, index, thumb. And then uh, your left hand heads to that fourth fret. Here I've uh, written that it's all with the right hand, middle, index, middle, index. You can just as well use your thumb. Uh, it's kind of up to you in terms of preference, but I, I want to encourage you actually probably to use your fingers. This is a great opportunity to just really work on the technical aspects um, of, of playing these kind of short notes with the right hand. Then bar six to this F sharp minor shape, very similar. This is almost like just an exercise with the right hand. And then a slide up again, bar seven, C sharp minor, similar, fourth fret again. And then the rhythm changes here slightly, bar seven and bar eight. And we kind of have a semi quaver followed by a quaver. Da, da, da. And then bar eight. And then bar nine is, is similar, it's the same thing. Here you can see I'm a little bit inconsistent with my left hand fingering. I'm sliding up from the second fret with the first finger here. I, I kind of find myself changing back and forth. You shouldn't really do that. You should choose a finger and just stick to it every time you, you get to a certain point. But um, yeah, you can decide which one that is. It doesn't have to be the second finger. It can just as well be the first finger. Then bar nine. Here we uh, have the same kind of feel. Uh, that we had before at the beginning of the verse. I think that's bar five, but we have the percussive part included. Yeah, this is a bit of a trick because you're playing the chord, then thumb on the sixth string hits on the sixth string, and then you want your thumb to kind of come over to play the open immediately, which is a bit of a trick getting that right. So it's good to practice this very slowly. And then here we have um, this little grace note beforehand. So it's kind of a hammer on. You can do it as a double hammer on if you like. Hammering on for the first fret to the second fret to the fourth fret. And then here you'll notice that on the last beat of this bar nine, I'm sliding up on my pinky finger on the fourth fret to the sixth fret. And uh, this is a really good thing to, to get used to as well. This is my left hand is muting everything. So I'm strumming all the strings with my right hand. Right hand doesn't have to be accurate at all. And I'm also hitting with my right hand. So if, if I do this, I've explained this quite a few times in tutorials as well. My index finger is going down and my thumb is coming across at the same time if I slow it right down. And the cool thing is my index can strum again all the strings because of the fact that my left hand is muting everything. Uh, and then um, that just works really well because you you have absolute control of the strings and you're still able to um, just not focus too much on, on being accurate with the right hand. Then bar 10, same thing here bar 10. After I do the hammer on, I'm playing the fourth fret and just muting all of the strings and that way I can do a nice big movement with my right hand. And then open to the C sharp minor shape in bar 11. This is kind of maybe not the typical C sharp minor shape that you might expect. Usually we find it up here as a bar chord, but here it's just kind of a revoicing, which I think was quite, it sounded quite nice. And then here we have the wrist thump, bar 11. Slide, and then again in bar 12. Let me just get to bar 12 real quick. 
the snap. Now here, I'm just gonna go through bar 12 slowly because it's a little bit tricky to follow. You play the open and the second fret together. You pluck those two strings. Then you play the two again. And as you slide onto the fourth frets, that's when you do the wrist thump. You're not playing the fourth fret with, uh, in terms of plucking, you're actually sounding it by sliding. And then you're doing it again. So this is really good to slow practice. Pluck together, pluck the second frets, slide up, and as you slide, you're gonna wrist thump. And then the same thing. And then the snap, which I'm not really getting today. My hands are a little bit sweaty, whatever. All right, then we go into the pre-chorus. This is pretty straightforward. Make sure that you're using your middle, uh, your ring finger, your middle finger, and your index finger. If you do find yourself doing index, 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 that's really lame. <laughs> Try and use all your fingers. It's so tempting. I know it's just way easier that way, but this is a really good exercise for right hand technique. Uh, one of the things I did here also, if you listen in the music, is I started off kind of nice and soft. And then louder the second time. So soft the first time, loud the second time within each bar. And then the same thing, bar 14, although there's a little hammer on here. Uh, yeah, this is also just a, a cool little, I don't know, more musical uh, thing just to, to remember. You know, it's one thing to play the notes. Uh, anyone can get to the point of just playing the notes. Uh, and if you've done that, that's a great thing, but trying to think a little bit more musical in terms of the dynamics, like playing softly or loudly. So from bar 14, bar 15, C sharp minor, this is just a regular C sharp minor chord. And then we have this half bar on bar 16, which is an A major shape, just fold out completely. Then an A minor, minor four chord. And then we go into the chorus. From bar 17, we start off with a, an E major chord. Wrist thump, wrist thump, hits. And then up, down, up. While you're doing this, at some point, you're gonna start moving your left hand up. Um, this is just a matter of preference. Make sure that you kind of keep strumming, especially the bottom two strings. And then here, we're gonna change to this shape over here. So one of the things I do, okay, this is definitely a, a shortcut, is while I'm moving, I kind of, I know at one point it says nine zero zero. That's the last part of, of beat three. There, I'm not really doing that. I'm just strumming up, but I'm muting the strings. So I'm actually only playing the bottom two strings. My fingers are on, on the strings, but if I actually play them, they're not sounding. I'm muting them in the shape of an E major so that I can get to this next shape, last beat, of bar 17. Um, these two open strings are doing all the work really. So don't stress about anything. I know there's a lot of other notes that are suggested. Those are just there. Um, yeah, I, I probably could have been more accurate. And then bar 16, sorry, bar 18. Yeah, this is, oh man, such a beautiful part. I actually re-harmonized this. This is technically supposed to be an F sharp minor chord. Um, I'm playing really more of an A major shape here. So yeah, apologies for, for not harmonizing correctly, but it sounded so good. I couldn't, I decided just to ditch the, um, the harmony temporarily here. <laughs> So simply just following the chord, up, up, down, up, then first finger comes down, strum down, and then as you're strumming up, your pinky finger goes down, and then as you're going down, and then as you're coming up. Yeah, just follow the music here, and then you'll find that you kind of come right. But again, nice slow practice. Then we have a C sharp minor power chord, this is kind of like a C sharp minus seventh 
And then here, this is really straightforward. Down, up, down, up, down, slide up with your left hand. And then you actually want all of those notes to sound. You're not gonna strum them again. If you can get this right, strum and then slide. Open E. And then here, bar, um, that's bar 20, we have again an A major shape as a bar chord. And then we slide up going into the next verse, which is very similar to what we had uh, in the first verse with the percussive part. Uh, and then it's the pre-chorus again into the chorus twice. And that's pretty much the entire um, song in a nutshell. I think some of the things that are really worth practicing, getting the, uh, the percussive stuff down, making sure that you're using the correct fingers with your right hand. And what I mean by the percussive stuff, that thing that I mentioned earlier, maybe the two effects, the first, very first chord as a, a new technique to practice in isolation. And then the uh, other, uh, while you're muting with your left hand. This is a really good technique to practice in isolation. And uh, that'll definitely uh, be some new things that you can take away after having learned this. So yeah, I really hope this is helpful. I know that I, I can kind of um, focus on some things a little bit too long, so I apologize for that. Uh, but if you have any suggestions for tutorials, things that I can do tutorials for, or uh, any suggestions on maybe how I can improve, because I'm always looking to improve, please leave a comment. Um, feel free to be critical. And um, yeah, hopefully you guys uh, appreciate this. And if you want the uh, tabs, you, you can get them on Patreon. All right, everyone, that's it for me uh, today. I hope you guys have a wonderful week and keep playing the guitar, keep practicing, and I'll see you guys next time.